What up, Bouchy, and welcome to another whiskey review with me, the Whiskey Novice. It is review number 86, part two of my series. Maybe I got the blends looking at some approachable, accessible, affordable blends. There you go. Blends of different varieties, be they blended scotch, blended malt from Scotland. And this time it is the turn of Monkey Shoulder, one that I'm sure. Most of us, if not all of us, are aware of this blended malt. And as I mentioned in the last review, if, you, if you're unaware or unsure about the difference between a blended scotch and a blended malt, etc., I've put a little uh, note down in the, a little guide down in the description, the video description down below. So you can check that out if it'll help any of the, anybody new to the, to the whiskey world and, and, Struggling to understand that one. This one, as I said, a blended malt, the one by William Grant and Son, released originally released in two thousand and five. This was uh, released using three malts, I believe, from their Speyside distilleries. Those being uh, Canenvy, Glenfiddich, and Balvenie. However, however. The recipe, I don't know whether the recipe has changed, but the recipe now more secret than that of Colonel Saunders' finger licking chicken, I'm going to suggest. But what it's undisclosed quantities and combinations of different space egg distilleries. So there you go. What we do know is, what I do know is, what I've learnt is that they are matured in First Fill X bourbon casks then vat it together in small batches for up to six months I believe so there you go that is a, a little background to monkey shoulder if anybody hasn't if anybody's new to monkey shoulder and don't the name monkey shoulder always a bit of a, a question always one that gets thrown up when they used to have to turn the malt by hand with the malt shovels there was a, a the condition that they could end up with and I think they ended up uh, dragging their arms almost so it was the, the malt men themselves come up with this name monkey shoulder and uh, it was this condition so it, it stuck with this one I've always liked the bottle I, li I just like the fact that they have the little monkeys on the on the shoulder of the bottle it's it's nice for what is considered affordable accessible blend this comes in around usually 20 to 30 pounds so there you go bottled at 40 percent once again sweet light malty and dusty are the first four things i'll hit you with there quite typically in my mind a sweet space cider fresh Pear, crunchy apples, confectionery, confectioner sugar is sweet. Easy on the nose. If 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 you know, I I quite like a space side. I like a light space side from time to time, and this one is easy on the nose. There's no fight in it at all. It's it, it's accessible. Slight hint of wallpaper paste. Custard powder. Typically space ID. I have a tendency to say things like that, but things being typically space ID. I mean, obviously, if this was sherry matured, you could say that that was Aberlari sort of space ID, but it's that slightly sweet floral lighter space side i mean that's the the angle that this takes 
Madeira cake. Touch of honey. Slight hint of, even a slight hint of ripe banana. And over time it becomes sharper and tangy. There is a, a sour note underneath it, which I can't quite put my finger on. Something slightly sour behind it all. Palette. Sweet, once again. Sharp. Sweet, sharp delivery. Pear drops. Even cooler cubes. Lots of confectionery notes. Marshmallow. Hint of almond. Hint of honey. Bubblegum. Mixed peel. Digestive biscuit. All sweet things. It's one for those with a sweet tooth. Very, very much so. It's quite, it's quite creamy. Fruit salad and cream. Just double cream. Yeah. I did say it before, it's it's accessible. That's what I'm trying to look for in, in all the, the the blends that I'm looking at in this series. I've always found Monkey's Shoulder quite hard to, to fault for an affordable, accessible, Speyside blended malt. I think William Grant and Sons have done a good thing with it. it it's in the right place in the market. It hits the spot, you know, that's what it does. Mint, getting slight minty note. Like I said in the last review, the finish once again tends to fall away a bit, but given time, it'll, it'll start to hang around. It's, it, it's good. It's a clean finish. It's not unpleasant. I would describe this best as a great whiskey to start somebody down their journey into whiskey. Whether you have a sweet tooth or not, Sweet whiskies tend to start better, I think. They tend to lead you down a path better. And when I say sweet, I mean sweet and light. Sweet and heavily sherried can be a bit uh, syrupy, a bit sickening, I think. Especially, I'm trying to put myself back in the shoes, back in my shoes when I started my journey. That something like this would be a great starting place. So, if you're new to whiskey, if this is the first time you've watched a review for Monkey Shoulder, I would highly recommend it to you as, as a good starting place. And the other thing about this series for me is, it's been great to go back because I, I did start with a lot of these whiskies. A lot of these blends were, were kicking off points for me. And Monkey Shoulder still when i go back to it now almost takes me back in the way that uh, a song can take you back to a place and a time in the way that a smell can take you back to a place and a time that's what this does it takes me back to earlier in my journey and the difference being now that when i go back to these whiskies and taste them again i'm tasting them with a slightly more matured palate and i can find more things in them and they're not bland by any means let them settle let them open up 
and and they will give. I won't add water once again. Uh, it would just it would just thin it too much. It would take out any life that's in there. So instead, we will just move on to. Yes, if you like this, and I nearly guarantee that most of us have had monkey shoulder at some point. So if you liked it, I mentioned in my review of the Naked Grouse that if there's something in a, a whiskey, in a blend that tends to stand out, something that, that maybe you like and you want to progress on, there's something you want to try something else, move it on a bit. I'm going to suggest this to you, Can Envy Single Malt. I don't know whether there's still Can Envy in this or not. It's a secret. Remember? Uh, so, uh, but what I will say is there's enough sweetness in this to make me think that there probably is still Can Envy in there and probably quite prominent because this is a good fresh clean single malt from the space ciders and bottled at 47 percent this then gives you a bit of wallop this this is a good little single malt if you can get your hands on it i would recommend it 50 cl ball yes a I think this is around the £35 mark. But it's fairly available and just worth a try. If you like Monkey Shoulder, I would recommend Can Envy Single Malt. There you go. Can't really say an awful lot more about it than that. Yeah, Monkey Shoulder. Good place to start. Doesn't do any harm every now and again. If you're long way down your journey, if you're all the way down your journey you've drunk all the whiskies in the world just go back every now and again and simplify things try try one of the old ones monkey shoulder isn't going anywhere and there's a reason why it's not a bad blend for the price hmm. there you have it that's that one done as well i'll be back next time for review number 87 where I will be looking at another blend. Until then, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much to my patrons. If you wish to join that group, the details are below. Till the next time, my friends, here's your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.